Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Childishly Superficial Patriotism. Today we're going to figure out who produces the best television. I'm in Scarborough on the northeast coast of England on this wonderful balmy spring day. As you can see the town is uh, getting ready for the crowds at spring break. <laughs> you should come. There'll be uh, ice cream and fish and chips and playing on the beach with your kids. Television is a topsy-turvy subject. 30 years ago, this was an easier answer because the quality of television writing was so abysmal in the USA. Well, to be honest, it was poor on both sides of the pond. But the UK had the, the crowning jewel of television in the BBC, where real artists were at work pushing the boundaries of what was both technically possible and socially acceptable. The BBC had some fantastic drama series and refreshingly, bloody hell, refreshingly indelicate, I think I'm going to be alright here, refreshingly indelicate sitcoms and truly groundbreaking documentaries, especially in natural history. BBC news reporting was the, was the gold standard, but times change. The BBC news seems to have lost a step because political bias has been demonstrated on several occasions. With the rise of streaming services and 24-hour uh, news access, the point of television is dying. I mean, the elderly, infirm and technophobic uh, struggle to keep it alive, but uh, shows like The Walking Dead and Breaking Bad broke the mould in what was acceptable on, on basic cable. Then of course Game of Thrones came along and made every other TV series its bitch. And shows like Game of Thrones illustrate a potentially thorny problem with the, un with the undercurrent of simplistic jingoism in these uh, arbitrary cross-cultural comparisons. I mean, who really cares, right? Who gives a shit what country people are from? Countries are just invented ring fences for the rich imposed by the ruling classes to prevent normal people from carving drinking cups from their boiled skulls. But I'm digressing into logic and reason. Let me narrow my perspective. In Game of Thrones, the writers are American, the money is Anglo-American, well, the tax relief is British. I read somewhere for every pound of tax relief the British government have granted the production, it generates about 13 pounds for the economy which isn't a bad investment and most of the talent on both sides of the camera is British. The thing is, when really good TV happens, the bar is raised for everybody and suddenly incompetence stands more starkly in relief. Look at the shoddy fantasy series released since Game of Thrones came out. So obviously attempted to piggyback a little piece of the pie, if, that's, if I can mix my metaphors. Do they ever succeed? Not really. I'm not going to name the crap ones, the Shannara Chronicles, but what does succeed? Original material. Look at Peaky Blinders, Stranger Things, The Crown, Narcos, even derivatives like The Amazing Westworld benefit from the advances in skills, perspective and expectations. So who does it better? The UK or the USA? Uh, well, I think with Netflix and HBO being American companies, the book kind of stops there. So, congratulations, America.
Right, I'm off to get an ice cream. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 oh,